Hey there, I hope you're doing good. My name is Jacob. Let's talk about video games. The journey to Last of Us Part 2 has been a wild ride to say the least. It was announced back in 2016, I want to say, and it's had years of very little information and just waiting. We finally got our first demo around E3 2018, I think? I think it was 2018. And today we got a deep dive into the gameplay and story during the PlayStation Direct. I mean the, the PlayStation State of Play. Review copies just got sent out yesterday, and things are starting to look up as the game has a little bit more than three weeks to release. And Last of Us 2, if I'm being 100% honest, is the game I'm most excited for this year, even more so than Cyberpunk 2077, which I know would be considered blasphemy to most people. But the first Last of Us is considered to be one of gaming's greatest achievements. And the first game has had a profound effect on me in the very least, as it's one of the titles responsible for my absolute love of video games. So hopes are pretty damn high for the sequel. Even the year 2020 that's bloated with so many 5 star titles such as Doom Eternal, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Persona 5 Royal, and even future next gen games and Nintendo titles we don't know yet. As of recording, Sony and Microsoft have barely done anything with their new consoles and Nintendo still hasn't announced jack, they haven't announced anything besides a new Paper Mario which looks... I'm not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> But Last of Us 2 still seems like it's a massive breakthrough title that furthers the mechanics of the first game, pushes graphics and storytelling forward, and I'm sure Last of Us Part 2 is going to be one of 2020's best and a great contender for Game of the Year. <laughs> Alright, enough of the bullshit. I want to believe everything I just said. I really do, and a small part of me still does believe all that, but I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, the entire internet is wrong but me. I'm not gonna stubbornly feign ignorance and act like, oh, it can't be that bad. Everyone's over-exaggerating and just being dramatic. That'd just be irresponsible of me and honestly kind of dumb to just ignore everybody's opinions just because I want them to be wrong. Have I seen the leaks? No, I've made a good point to stay away from them. So I really have no clue what they could be. I really don't. But all I know is like, me and my entire friend group were excited. I still am, but my friend group, one of my buddies, canceled his pre-order. The other one pretty much just goes into a laughing fit every single time the game is brought up. And I'm pretty much being made fun of, like, every single day for wanting this game still. And I'm still not, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna look into the leaks. I'm not gonna say, like, oh, you guys are wrong or being dramatic and they're just, you know, shit-talking. Because that's what, you know, they are shit-talking, but they're not, there's some truth there. I'm not going to sit here and say, you guys are wrong, and I'll prove it to you. I'm nervous as hell for the game. One of my friends I asked specifically, like, hey, if you were me and I knew the leaks, would I be mad? And he's like, oh, absolutely, dude, hell yeah, you'd be pissed. And I was like, no, no, that's not what I wanted to hear. But, like, the way I see it, if a game has stellar gameplay, a great soundtrack and sound design, fantastic art style and brilliant level design, doesn't that still merit? Doesn't that still merit to be in the very least a mediocre game, if not a fantastic masterpiece or whatever? Even if the story's a complete dumpster fire, doesn't that at least merit its average at best? I, I'm having a hard time believing the leaks are that bad, but I'm not saying they're not because I just... It's rough going on to social media and having to block everybody, ignore comments, and it's rough going on the preview videos that pump me up and give me ha make me happy and give me butterflies in my stomach. And I see the likes to dislike ratio is just dislikes winning and likes being tanked, the comments are disabled, or I can't look at them. It's just... It sucks, man. I'm really pumped for this game. I didn't know, apparently, that flopped hard and I don't even know anything about it. I guess I can look, but what's the point in that? I mean, at the end of the day, right, the story shouldn't matter 100%, even The Last of Us 1 was super story heavy. We've, I've played tons of games that are have awful stories but great everything else, you know? We don't play Siege for the story or Mario Kart for the story. The gameplay still looks really fun. I don't care if Ellie has penises for tits and becomes the fifth hokage the game still looks fun as hell 
But all, honestly, all of that rambling is just me trying to psych myself up for what I know to be, at the very least, not what I expected. Watching the new gameplay from the state of play, it honestly really does look like Hadiog has improved upon the formula of the first game and from their prior games. More open areas, extra side content, ropes and rope swinging, overall better shooting mechanics, which they learned from making Uncharted 4, improvement on the crafting, more mobility, and overall smoothing out the gameplay, like adding dodge and the shooting looks way better from the first, you know, fixing the mistakes and the problems of the first game. It looks like it's going in the right direction. Don't make a fucking sound. Hands up. My one seemingly minor complaint, which might paint a worse or bigger picture, would be the jarring use of the Hotline Miami camo on the PlayStation Vita in the licensed Ice Cube song during the state of play. Like, it feels really odd that those were there. And I know Uncharted 4 had a PS1, right? You could play it with the original Crash Bandicoot. But the inclusion of Hotline in the song It Was a Good Day, it, it pulled me out of the game world. And for a company that is so focused on making grounded experiences, this seems like an odd choice. Or a company, and I guess Neil Druckmann focuses more on grounded experiences. But I can't help but wonder why include the Hotline? Or that song, but more particular Hotline. Like, what was Naughty Dog's purpose in including that little Easter egg? And what would Denitin have to gain from putting it in there unless they agreed who approached who? I assume Naughty Dog and Sony approached Devolver or Denton, both probably, like what? It's just interesting to me something like that would get in the game. And then we see it and they show it off during a time when apparently everyone's talking about how awful the story is and how poor decisions, you know, how poor choices led to a poorly written story. But yet a lot of time was focused on finding that little Easter egg and putting it in the game and talking to the right people and putting it in it just I don't know, maybe it's a weird thing to get hung up on, but I feel like there's more to it there. That you, Nora? A couple years ago, there was reportedly Amy Hennig got forced out from working of not working at Naughty Dog by higher ups and Neil Druckmann specifically. A couple months ago, there was reports of massive crunch time um, on Last of Us Two. There was the initial leaks that came out that weren't that bad when the game got delayed from COVID, allegedly COVID in May, despite it being basically done and going gold. Then there's the major leaks that happened. And then, you know, the day after those major leaks happened, everybody saw them. All of a sudden, oh, the release date's June now. It's just, it seems like everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. And it seems like this has potentially been building for a while. And I feel like that there's this enough evidence, enough compelling of a case with the leaks. I still haven't seen the leaks. So I'm pretty much arguing for the wrong answer that it's very obvious why the game turned out the way it did. And I'm saying that having having not seen anything yet, having not played it, having I'm still excited for it. Despite everything, I still want to play it and I'm still super hyped for it. And I'm constantly telling my friends like, let's just wait till it comes out. Let's just wait till it comes out. Maybe it's not that bad. But I'm anticipating, I guess, to be disappointed. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll love it. I'm hoping I'll love it. I know I like the gameplay at least because it looks, it does look phenomenal. So I guess, long story short, I am still excited for Last of Us 2. Do I think it's going to be the best game of the year? Do I think it's going to be my favorite game of the year? I want to, but not, not, not anymore. Which makes me sad, because Last of Us 1 was such a masterfully crafted game, which I would recommend to really anybody, you know? But Last of Us 2, while... The previews are shaping up. It does look like it's also equally as masterfully made as the prior games they have, Naughty Dog has done. I can't just ignore 
all the dislikes and the flaming on Twitter and all the terrible, terrible business decisions my dog is making. I can't just feign, and again, I can't just feign ignorance and act like nothing's happening and just pretend everything's gonna be good. But at the same time, I still am hopeful because there are hundreds of people that worked on the game. And I assume at some point, I know, you know, reading articles and reading into it now, I don't think everyone believes in it as much anymore, but at some point everyone working on it did believe in it and wanted it to be an amazing game. And despite all that, you know, allegations and all the questionable decisions, and despite the leaks, I do think Neil Druckmann wanted to make something truly remarkable. I'll still be picking up the game day one, and I'm still really hopeful for it. And I hope there's people out there who are still excited to play it as well, whether they know the leaks or not. I plan to do a follow-up video to this video after the game's out and after I've finished it, so you can see my hope turn into just rage and despair, and you can see me rant and yell about how awful it is. Or maybe you'll see me defend the game because I loved it and I think it's great and I think everyone misunderstands it. If that's the case, I guess you can dislike that video when it pops up. But we won't know until the game's out. I want games to continue to improve because I believe they're the highest form of art and entertainment. And I believe that Last of Us is a game that supports that statement and I believe it pushed the video game medium forward for the better. And I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see to where the sequel will land on that spectrum. If it helps games move forward, if it's just mediocre, or if it really is just a burning dumpster fire, like everyone seems to say it is. Thank you guys for watching. This video was pretty spur of the moment and not what I really planned as my first video. I didn't really make a script or anything, so I apologize if I rambled and repeated some statements. I just wanted to talk about Last of Us, since it's a pretty hot topic right now, given the state of play was today, and the leaks and discussion of the leaks have been going on for the last week or two, or I guess like a month now, I think. And well, I don't like seeing all the hate online about something I love. I want to speak, try to speak positively, even if I know it might be in vain. I don't know, maybe I'm just letting my friends bag in on the game and bag in on me for being excited. Maybe I'm letting them get to me. I don't know. They haven't spoiled anything yet, so I guess they're alright. I guess they're okay, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And stay safe and take care out there.